And we are live. Yes, Hello, everybody. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Yvonne here from My Hello Kitchen and Dr. Maria Saeed, Holistic Mom MD. We are here every week except last week. I was traveling, so I had a bit of jet lag, so we didn't appear. That's not usual for us, but we're back to the normal schedule. And today we are going to talk about my personal favorite subject. I think I really pushed this one because I I was like, you got to try the teas. You got to try the teas that I'm getting in Turkey. And uh, so today we're going to talk about herbal teas, not caffeinated ones so much, but herbal teas and what they can do for you and your immunity and so much more. I have a, a buffet of teas here to wow check that out <laughs> dr approved i was i've been trying to get you to come to turkey so i could take you to my market and show you you know all the different teas that are there every week and uh but since i couldn't bring that bring you to turkey i brought the teas, brought here. The teas here yay <laughs> So, because for those people who are just joining us, we have been talking for the last couple months all about the immune system. Mm -hmm. And I think, well, let's go ahead and recap because it's been about two weeks. Yeah. So the immune system, especially with everything that's going on in the world today, the immune system is super important to fight off friend versus foe, yeah. keep your body in balance and all that amazing thing. So when you have, if there's a virus, we want to make sure that our immune system is working appropriately to make sure that it can get rid of the virus and there's just enough reactions to get rid of it and not damage everything else. Yeah. But now studies have shown that those people that are dying from COVID-19 and um, that are suffering from the morbidities and the mortalities from COVID-19 are those that are dealing with insulin resistance or pre-diabetes or elevated blood sugar level or are obese or have an underlining chronic health condition. And these people are already pre-inflamed. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is a reaction that occurs by your immune cells as they try to get rid of the damaging agent or try to fix yourself from injury. So that's the reaction that occurs. There's two different types of immunities. There's an acute immunity and there is a chronic acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute is when you have, you know, there's a little bit of an infection and it tries to get rid of it, everything is good. But over time, that develops into chronic inflammation because of the fact that you, when you can't get rid of that stimulus, it continues and continues and continues and can lead to something called chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation gradually destroys this beautiful masterpiece that we were born with and destroys our body from the inside out and leads to diabetes, heart disease, obesity. It leads to all of these chronic conditions. And so it also weakens your immune system. And what's so subhanAllah, and I know we're going to talk about autophagy today. Yes. Yes, that is what we're going to talk about today. I love yes. that. We just had a bit of a tiny conversation about that before we started. Yes. I'm excited to autophagy. learn from you. Absolutely, because what happens is that normally what should happen is that our bone marrow contains naive cells or hemopoietic stem cells, and they are cells without a function. They have no function. But what happens is that when they come out into the world, that's when and into the, our body, that's when it tells us that you need to become, if you're if, like, so if the body needs if, as a high inflammation, it says you need to turn into these army cells. Or if, if it's everything is good, then it says, oh, you need to turn into this type of cell. So I've already, if we're already pre-inflamed, when it comes, one of these, the, these cells are really deficient. They haven't gotten the nutrients they need. Plus, when they come out into this world now, now they are super um, hyperactive. And on top of that, because now they've been poised to become army cells. So when there's a threat that occurs, it sort of destroys everything in its path, leading to something called a cytokine storm. So now normally what should happen, every 10 seconds, your body creates a million white blood cells, like 20 million red blood cells and 30 million platelets, like every 10 seconds. So with everything that we're gonna discuss today specifically, 
these cell what what you what you want is it's called immunorejuvenation where your body rejuvenates itself and you're able to create get rid of the old cells or the weakened immune cells and it gets replaced by good positive immune cells and so over time when you're dealing with a chronic condition like diabetes or heart disease or any of these other chronic health conditions what happens is that your body has too many your it's basically called inflammation because of the inflammation related to diabetes related to heart disease related to obesity related to aging those cells are not functioning appropriately when they're not functioning appropriately they're weakened and we need what the biggest thing is to optimize your immune system we have to get rid of those old cells and replace by new cells but the only way you can do that one of the best ways that you can Optimize your body's immune system, getting rid of these old cells, also called autophagy. Autophagy means like getting rid of these old cells and giving more fresh new cells. Is it like sloughing off? Or like gonna it's like off. Basically, it's like eating up everything, yeah, yeah. bad stuff. So fasting is one of those best ways. Like I try to fast regularly. So fast helps with autophagy. Plus now you can boost your autophagy with a lot of some of these teas, and on top of that, these some of these teas also have super anti-inflammatory properties. And that's what we can go into because, again, it's super important, super powerful to um, and something you can easily do in, in the morning. Like right now, I'm, I'm intermittent fasting. So I'm trying to aid my autophagy. Plus now on top of that, you can add in your herbal teas. Because yeah. herbal tea has a specific phytonutrient i mean it is just so powerful and you probably saw that in turkey right that everybody was probably eating drinking this in the morning time mm, no yeah, no so, oh, now it, you know <laughs> it's so funny when do they usually do when do they usually drink it the herbal teas are usually uh provided like when somebody's sick like, oh wow! Kind of, they knew that they knew that it had some immune boosting. Yes, yeah. so they even sell, for example, I had never seen in my life St. John's wort as a tea, and I don't have it here with me, but I have it back in Turkey. And I, I would, I know, because I, I would look at some of the, the 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 dried herbs, and I would say, like, well, what is this, and what is that, and then ask my groups on Facebook, and figured out that one of them uh, was St. John's wort. Which is which is uh, commonly given for like like an antidepression, a tea. Yep. And I've only ever seen it in the in the pill form. You know, I've never taken wow. it, but, but I you know I've heard of it quite often. Mm -hmm. But in Turkey, you know, the regular black tea is like drinking. They it's drink more more than water. It is the water of the country. So it's tea in the morning, tea in the afternoon, tea in the evening. It's just you know tea, black tea. Uh, so, but the herbal teas are, you know, people do have them. I think they just pretty much use them for like specific purposes. Now I tried to get off of caffeine as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, I can't handle too much caffeine. Yeah. I feel a little too, my heart races a little too much, but, but, but the black tea for me is much better than the coffee. Um, however, in the winter time is when you do see more of the herbal teas being used. So, um, I can go through them if you want me to start. Yes. Okay. Absolutely, because what's that, really exciting, and I think I love these teas, and I actually have done some combinations of things because uh, I don't know. I was just experimenting, and nobody told me to do this. But this is my favorite one in the whole wide world. Um, the smell is kind of lemony, but this is called a uh, abrachai. But you can find you can find these everywhere. This is not just oh. pertinent to Turkey. I'm not. You know, I, I want people to know they can they can find these online or uh, in some health food stores. But other chai is basically a, a mountain sage. It's different than the other sage. So beautiful. It, it's beautiful. Yeah, this is gorgeous. I mean, I bought this because it looks so pretty. And this is it's not. It doesn't always look this uh, like citrusy green, limey green. It usually looks darker. But I think because they just dried them. Um, and this is the other sage that most of us are more used to. So let me let me go into the each one. So Ada Chai or the mountain sage, uh, it I love this tea because I use 
I use the whole thing. I even put the stems in, but you know, I put like a few of these in some water, boil it. And then even if you, if you let that pot sit all day, if you keep adding water, it never gets bitter. Wow. So, and I, you know, I don't really know exactly what it's good for, but I know that I just feel really, I don't feel hype, you know, more awake or focused or anything like that after drinking it. I just, I feel good. I feel like it kind of cleans out my system. And um, if I'm feeling a little bit like down or something, like maybe I'm coming up with a cough, I, I just take it. Um, but, but I like to have it daily as much as possible, even in the summer. It really is more of a winter thing, but because I like it, um, I just have it often. So this, this is my favorite one. If, if I'm coming back and forth from Turkey, I have to bring this with me because I just want to have what it. What does it taste? What does it taste like? It tastes like, um, it almost tastes like it has a bit of a citrus uh, element to it, but it's a really soft tea. It's not bitter. Um, it's, it's, it's maybe even a little bit on the sweeter side. I don't put anything in it, but you can put like lemon and honey, but I like it just plain. It's just lovely. It's not, it's not too floral either. Some people kind of have allergies from some floral teas, but it's just um, it's very earthy. And, you know, I, I think everybody should try it. And I know like if anybody's watched the, the show or the read the book on the blue zones, they talk about the Greek mountain tea uh, from Ikaria in Greece, which is one of the blue zones, which is very close to where I live in Turkey. And they, it's just that region of like, you know, the dry air, the mountain air, the sea, I, things things that grow in that region um, in the mountains are, are herbs like these. And then, so the people drink this in the winter time, I guess to help prevent coughs and things like that, or, you know, but, but you can find them like maybe even more so in a Greek store. Um, but but I've seen them more in a big store than I have in like Mediterranean stores. But but it's a oh, great and this is absolutely and it's what's really, really cool is that these teas are super anti-inflammatory. Yeah. Um, super antioxidant. They actually yeah. have some of these teas, and this is where it's so fun that they use it when they're sick, when people are sick. Mm -hmm. They reduce oxidative stress, and they actually have antiviral, anti-inflammatory, yes. and antimicrobial properties that all boost your immune function. You know, when when we first heard about the virus in Turkey in January, um, I immediately went back to the market and got as many teas as I could because I just, you know, know inherently that like many teas are antiviral. So I would I would definitely um, I was drinking this more than coffee. I just kind of cut the coffee out and even even you know if I'm making a regular black tea, sometimes I throw in a couple herbs just to see what it would be um but um but there is another one so this this is oregano like a mountain oregano um from this is like greek or turkish you can find them in the stores but this is very different from your spice rack oregano that you find this is really really strong stuff but in the in the mediterranean they make a tea out of this oregano when someone has a cough so it's supposed to really like like clear up the cough i don't know why but if you read up on it that's what they say like that they they give to people when they have a any kind of respiratory something going on and if you think about it it almost i mean i cook with it but it almost has a medicinal kind of of feel to it when when i smell it it feels like med it smells like medicine to me it's so so pungent you know great with chicken and all that but you know i think the, the, the point of some of this is that, you know, we, we oftentimes look at herbs as just for cooking, but around the world, they use herbs in teas to drink, mm -hmm. herbs and flowers, you know? Wow. So this is one of my favorite things, and I keep it, I keep a lot of this on hand for, for that kind of thing if I ever have a cough as well. Um, then we have... Uh, of course, the regular sage, you know, regular sage, well, I say regular meaning because this is the kind that most people are are very used to seeing. 
Um, again, like you can grow this throughout the whole U.S. I think everybody, it's very expensive when you buy it in the stores and the small containers, but try growing this in your yard to dry it for the winter. I don't really like fresh sage to cook with. I think it doesn't have a, as pungent of a, of a taste, but it really, it's, it's really meant to be dried, I think. And if you dry it and save it, like they, they wrap these in bundles in Turkey. I got this from the market there, but but it, yours could look the same way. And this is also great, actually, for if you have a black tea and you want to add some flavor to it, this uh, sage is really is really wonderful for it. Do you know uh, any of the medicinal properties of sage or anything? Oh, like absolutely. Sage has so many medicinal properties, specifically being antiviral, antimicrobial. They all seem to have that. <laughs> Seriously, they do. It's like, it's really, really important. And it's really great for your skin. It's great for memory, you know. Really? Um, yeah, it actually helps with like Alzheimer's and dementia oh, and wow. diabetes. Oh, yeah. Combats obesity, treats menopausal symptoms, anti-diarrheal. Oh, wow. No wonder living in the, those blue zones are living past 100 in like the good quality of life and state of mind because they really are, you know, living off the earth with these beautiful wonderful things that they grow and they don't waste yeah. anything you know and actually not even just that i mean people like grow, you know it's easy to easy to grow yeah easy um, to grow. and it's very non-toxic people actually it help they, they throw it into their like gardens even to as like pest control it's just and then helps to attract pollinators it can be even used as like you know bats like there's so many essential oils but there's so many different ways and teas is such a great way to use it. And, you know, uh, one other thing I found to be very expensive when you buy in the grocery store are bay leaves. But if you live in a climate where you can grow them, uh, bay leaves are not just for cooking either. In Italy, for example, I grew up knowing that um, when a baby has colic or you have like an upset stomach, to boil some water with bay leaves and maybe a little lemon. And it really helps to kind of like, uh, just clear up like, like if you have like gas bubbles in your stomach or something. It, and so when babies, you know, you know how babies kind of get fussy when they're having, so in Italy they, they uh, make a tea of bay leaves and then cool it off and then give it to the to babies to, to help relieve the gassiness. So wow. um, it's so interesting how, you know, we There's don't- so eat. many different things, yeah. I know. It's yeah. so exciting. Yeah. So I, I took these off of the bay leaf. In, in Fetia, where I am, there's hundreds of bay leaf trees everywhere. And I just kind of borrowed them. <laughs> I just took them off because they're doing it. They're all, all over. So yeah. I, um, actually, these came from somebody who who pruned their bay leaf tree and threw it out. And I, and I grabbed it and I said, okay, let me, uh, you know, grab all the leaves and dry them in the sun. I just dried them on my balcony. And then uh, now I have bay leaves to cook with and they're huge. They're just huge. You only really need one for a cup of tea. So um, that's amazing. And also, so other things um, I think people don't maybe realize is like saffron, for example. Uh, people, you know, typically preserve saffron like gold because it is so expensive, but one of the, my favorite teas of all time when I feel really sick in my stomach or nauseous or something is a, a mixture of ginger with saffron and honey. And I don't know what it does, but it sort of knocks out the nausea. And, um, you know, you just need a few strands of that saffron, but they say saffron, I've read, is really good for the stomach. Can you verify that? Yes, the saffron. Really the stomach. Saffron is... Now one, it's like a delicacy, right? Because it's very yeah. difficult yeah. to find. But the nutritional benefits are huge to the point where, you know, it like boosts cardiovascular health. It helps with, it's, it actually has like really great anti-cancer benefits. Really? It's really good. Really? Yeah. And it actually helps to alleviate PMS. It promotes satiety, weight loss. It improves your anxiety and depression. It does. There's so many nutritional benefits of that, specifically when it comes to like mental health and anti-cancer, but just because of the, all of those antioxidants and it's so good. Right. right. Um, and then again, with teas, oh, so yum. 
And then I think everybody knows about chamomile, right? And a lot of times we get it in the packets. And I want to say to people too, uh, you know, when you're buying herbal tea, any teas, try to get loose leaf always and make your own uh, packets, like get your own kind of uh, tea strainer or something. I mean, I like the, the wooden ones. I, I use like the wooden ones because they're cute but and eco-friendly. But, um, you know, when you buy small packets of tea, um, first of all, they a lot of the bags can be toxic or with chemicals in them unless they're labeled organic which makes it very expensive so try to get as many loose teas as possible and if you can find chamomile like that then it can be really inexpensive but i mean most people know chamomile to be something to help you calm down and go to sleep i personally don't have that effect with chamomile like it doesn't have that effect on me if i if i if i drink this before going to bed i actually stay up all night i don't know what it is it just doesn't work on me but it is very calming and what i do with it actually is if i have any inflammation in my like sometimes i get allergies from my cat or i get like a spider bite or something and i make a chamomile tea and cool it off and make like a compress out of it so i'll dip a cloth in it and then put it on my face and that puts brings down the inflammation it does and specifically you know this is one of the Chamomile is one of the best anti-inflammatory teas out there. Mm. And uh, it's actually been used for like 5,000 years to help yeah. longevity and tranquility. And actually in some places, like, they actually call it the herbal aspirin because of its pain lowering properties. Oh, that that Yeah, so then the anti-inflammatory properties really allow the herb to reduce the swelling and the pain uh -huh, right, right. and then the, the inflammation and the underlining inflammation yes and it's so powerful and it's, again just inflammation of the skin and the mucus. inflammation you know i i first discovered it maybe like 20 years ago when i had a really bad bout of eczema mm -hmm. and at, this is the very beginning of my journey of going all natural with everything because my body could not tolerate anything with uh, smells, fragrances, anything uh, not natural. And all of a sudden my body just totally inflamed and it became thick like leather all the way up my arms and my legs. And so I went into a, a natural food shop and a woman saw me and saw that I was like basically suffering with this thing. And then she she recommended a cream. It was a, it was from Germany and I, and I, I don't find it anymore here, but, um, but it, it had chamomile, it was full of chamomile, basically. It was a chamomile cream, and it was the only thing that worked on my skin. And it and it just settled. It didn't cure it, but it settled all the inflammation. And then I started beating up on it, and I was just amazed at how chamomile was so, you know, because every, because a lot of times we're so used to looking at herbs for cooking or drinking. We're not really looking at all the other applications that, that they have. So powerful because right. we're skin, mucous membranes, right. bacterial infections of skin, mucus, right. Mouth, right. respiratory tract, right? Um, even soothes the gut, right? It Interesting. The gut. Well, that that's the thing. Right? If you see that it 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 um, quells your inflammation on your skin, like red hardened skin can get can just be calmed down with that. And imagine what it's doing inside of your body, right? Yeah. So, so just. Perfect. Perfect. With, with that stuff, right? Yeah. So the thing is, like, if I walk into a room and I start sneezing and there's chemicals, like, I'm I'm so sensitive to it now because I just don't put those things, you know, in my body. But you know, everything has a reaction. Everything has a consequence that we inhale, touch, eat, you know, and we need. That's the whole point of this whole topic of like conscious living and conscious cons consumption, right? It makes such a big difference because specifically when it comes to our overall health and well-being i mean these are things that yeah. we can do anytime like you can stick chamomile in a bath yes and that that yeah. will help the skin and then or even even put it in like homemade body and you know beauty cares and you can grow it lavender know? and chamomile oh so in awesome. the midwest i mean it really it really grows great in the midwest i mean i when i lived in chicago i I had field. I had a pretty sizable yard, and I saw it growing. And I think the people before me had 
had grown in. And like, if you just have the fresh flowers, throw them into a pot of water with them, um, you know, even like fresh strawberries and strawberry leaves and whatever else is growing that's that you can consume, you know, flowers, just throw them in and make a tea. And, you know, like that's what, that's what people have done for centuries. You know, we have to kind of get back to that usage of like what's there in nature rather than thinking that everything we need is at the store. Right. Absolutely. I'm a big advocate for growing your own stuff. Like I don't have a yard anymore, but I have balconies and I fill them with potted stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it was exactly noticed one of the really great teas that you can easily use and easily pot is ginger. Oh my gosh, ginger! Have you ever potted it? It's so easy. Yeah, I've never had luck with it. Though. I have never had luck with ginger. I don't know what it is. Really? Yeah, I have. I don't have a lot of luck with root root vegetables. I, I did potatoes recently, but that was in Turkey, and I think the climate just helped. But um, I, I didn't try ginger. I should have. I think it needs the right climate too. Do you do yeah, it? In I, mean, I just did it inside. Yeah, because it's probably nice and warm inside, and you have. Yeah, we window. just left it inside, and it just yeah. like oh, we have all this natural ginger because again, it can also help to alleviate inflammation. Yeah, ease any um upset stomachs or even controls yes. cholesterol. Yeah. So I we love food. right now. I have a ginger turmeric tea going on right now with me. <laughs> I just add so actually, if you great. can grow ginger, you can grow turmeric because it's the same kind of it's the same. It's really yeah. easy. Yeah. And I just, don't, just, so. yeah, just we'll add a little like you what do you call it? Like just grate it a little bit on top of your teas. And I love turmeric tea, super anti-inflammatory. Yes, I bet you. All I would I would challenge everybody who's watching, go through your cabinets today and find like one, two, three things that you could combine and make yourself a cup of tea. Like get try to backtrack from the caffeine today and just do some kind of tea. You probably have, even if you have dried uh, strawberries, like, you know, Trader Joe's sells great dried fruits. You can throw those into a tea in hot water and, and have a strawberry tea. You don't need to buy a packet of strawberry tea. You can just boil dried fruits and make a tea. You can do that. Why so, not? Right. So um, I have two more to show you guys. One is this uh, this type of cinnamon. I think this is the Ceylon cinnamon. I cinnamon is very warming. So I make a tea in the winter. I don't do this in the summer because it makes me too hot. But I mix this with rose hips, and I don't have any rose hips to show you guys because I'm totally out of them. I use them like crazy. Uh, the combination is heavenly. I need to put this on my blog because I don't know what it is about the two, but um, it, you know, cinnamon is said to help with people with diabetes, right? So it's, does it lower your blood sugar? Somehow? Cinnamon is so good for your blood sugar, right? And then, and then rose hips. So it's so interesting because so the summertime and early fall is when you can harvest the rose hips but you dry them and then they give you vitamin C in the winter. So you put them in the tea and you have this uh, sugar lowering, you know, cinnamon with the vitamin C that you probably need. Packed with antioxidants. Yeah. So the cinnamon is again packed with antioxidants, like mm -hmm. polyphenols, um, all of that has been proven to help with you know, lowering the viral illnesses that are going on, optimizing our immune system. Again, it low improves, relieves inflammation, protects your heart health, stabilizes the blood sugar level, helps to lower yeah. cancer, fights viruses and infections. Yes. yes. So important, optimizes even your oral and prevents candidal overgrowth, skin allergies. Like, and even though, have you noticed that if you put it in, things just taste sweeter? Cinnamon, yes. Yeah, right? It tastes sweeter, even though there's no sugar in it, but then it really just tastes sweeter. It's so funny you said that because I, so I, my grandmother made Italian, you know, my Sicilian grandmother, you know, we grew up with her pasta sauce. Uh, but she used to put a little sugar in it. Um, one time I caught her, I said, that's what you do to make it sweet. Um, so she said, oh yeah, yeah, that's what I, I never knew the secret. 
but I personally don't want any white sugar in anything. And I, and I remembered that I used to know a family um, that I worked in a pizza place and they, they did, um, you know, their tomato sauce. They were Lebanese family, or sorry, Syrian, they're Syrian. And they used cinnamon in the sauce. And their sauce always tasted sweet. Cinnamon in the sauce? Yeah. And I thought, you know, it, it, it's not, you would never think to equate it, like, because it's not sugar, but it gives it a sweetness. And it, ha it gives it a really awesome, unique flavor. But it, it, it is different than the Sicilian sauce, I will say. So I don't usually use it. But if you want something sweet, that does the trick. And some people use carrots. They put a carrot in because that also kind of sweetens it up. But the cinnamon takes it to another level. Oh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? It's so interesting, right? Oh, delicious. Yeah. And it does because actually, and then on oh, top of that, like, you see like that sweet toast. But because it has anti-diabetic effects, it actually lowers the glycemic load of your entire meal. Yeah. Like, how crazy is that? So, so like, so it will actually lower the actual sugar in the meal and will raise the yeah, sugar so a lot much because it ha it blunts that effect. Crazy, right? That is crazy. I I love. I really love this. Uh, the the Eastern traditions of drinking tea after a meal. Because I really feel like um, a hot liquid, for example, uh, always kind of like breaks up any fat. Is there any truth to that? Because you know, like they say, don't have like a coke, like a cold coke with like a hamburger and fries. You know, you're just like having like fatty food with like something cold. It just seems like what would that do to the fat, right? Yeah. <laughs> but if you have, you know, a hot beverage, a hot tea. Doesn't that help break up the, the, the it just fat? It really helps with digestion. A it lot of things digestion. help with digestion. Absolutely. It helps with digestion, heals the gut, gives the anti-inflammatory, and actually can even boost um, the overall nutritional benefits, even in sometimes the food. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, um, if you do, like, black pepper and turmeric together, it boosts those ah. Qualities. So there's different types of combinations. Combinations, yeah. yeah. Really, yeah. even the nutritional quality and the and the actions of that herbs. And right. Well, there's another tea that I, I I always have to keep on hand, and I had a really hard time finding this in Turkey, but it's probably there somewhere. But I, I get this in the U.S. and I have actually used to make it because I had raspberries in my yard. Um, but it's red raspberry leaf, and you can't really see because it it's all crushed now. But red raspberry leaf is a lifesaver for me uh, as a woman because uh, during those crampy times, this stuff knocks it out. I don't know what it is. Do you know what's in the red raspberry leaf that does that? Uh, it does. So what happens is that actually, these are, one, it's really good for women's health, just like what you said. It uh, particularly during like pregnancy and labor to help prevent postpartum hemorrhage. Oh it, wow! Yeah, I'm telling you, it's wow. like crazy. <laughs> amazing. Um, I, that's a that's a real threat. It me. is, and actually, what it also has, likes to do is it has a drying effect because this red raspberry leaf tea has something called tannins in it, uh, and these, yeah. tannins, um, these leaves again it can be used as like mouthwash and like you know tonsillitis, oh. and diarrhea, and they're really just high in nutrition. And, yeah. um, and I'm sure a lot of people watching probably have a couple of, you know, raspberry bushes in their yard. Like it's a common thing to put in your garden, right? It's easy. They sell them at all the garden shops. So, you know, can we just take our leaf and dry it? Yeah. And then that's all you do. And then again, B vitamins, calcium, iron. Yes. Words up all of these chronic health conditions. So it's really people realize there's calcium in a lot of teas. I don't realize that. Like the rose hip I was talking about. Like I did when I read that, I said, like, that's amazing that there's these things like you think you only get them from uh, you know, meat or food, you know, foods, but teas are such an essential right. part right. of that. Absolutely. What, I don't, you, what else what are the other things that you got going on there? I don't have them here with me now because I just traveled back, but um I wanna say fennel 
is a big one for uh, digestion. After a heavy meal, gotta have fennel. It's kind of similar to my bay leaf. It's like stronger, fast, works faster than my bay leaf tea. <laughs> but fennel, I, I, I keep that on hand more for tea than for cooking. Um, and also right. bone health, improves skin, has the high in vitamin C, lowers blood sugar. Interesting. Blood pressure. Yeah. Aids in digestion. Like exactly what you said. Yeah. It exactly. really, really, really works. In actually a lot of the gut healing diets out there, specifically called the GAPS diet, it's specifically included to help heal the gut microbiome. Wow. Really? Yeah, I'm telling you, like, if we just go on all of these crazy, and yeah, talk I love it. I This is like one of my most passionate topics, because I just feel so great when I have these teas on. And I have, you know, I, I can never be minimalistic in my tea cabinet, because I have to have these on hand. I feel like they're my medicine cabinet or something, you know? Like, yeah, I, no, it does. And I just really love it so much. You know what? Especially if it's after a meal, it's really fun because actually it has even, um, it increases, like, it helps you, like, with satiation. Right. And how many of us in this busy, uh, busy world, you know, really, like, we eat and go. I mean, really, I don't feel like I've... We don't rest and digest. Rest and digest and then have a cup of tea. It almost feels like a luxury, but it's a health, you know... We need it. Being on the go, go, go all the time is actually what's getting us sick in the first place. Mm -hmm. So we got to calm yeah. it down. I think also what people, I can tell people that they can do now is if you have just, for example, in your cat, in your refrigerator, a lemon or an orange, just give me one second. Or even an apple. <laughs> okay. Ooh. If you have a, a lemon or an orange and, you know, you don't really need this tool, but if you have it, it's awesome. And you just, you know, grate, grate the peel off like this. Okay. And you can see it on my website. My love, could you mm. I, I, I've done this a few times in my website because it's just so easy. But basically, oh, I smell it. It smells amazing. Just put this on a paper towel in your kitchen. So maybe near a sunny window. By the next day, it's dry. You put it in the, um, a jar. And when you want to have a, a citrus tea, just add this to your tea. Or if you're making any of these other teas and you want some like zesty, citrusy thing going on, you add your, well, you can do it fresh too, but you just add your dried peel to the tea. I keep these on hand typically. I don't have any now because they're out, but I keep a, a lemon peel jar and a, and a in a in a jar of uh, citrus peel because it's so easy expensive at the store but look 24 hours you're you're done put it in a paper towel you got your lemon peels and if you can do apples as well if you have a really? yeah the, the peel right the peel okay, yeah so apple so in turkey there's something called uh um em, elma elma emla or elma I'm so emla. It's, oh, it's so good. It's like a super antioxidant. It's like a super anti-cancer yeah, one. It's very popular in Turkey. They even sell it to all the tourists. The tourists wow. come in. They add a little sugar sometimes. You got to be careful. Yeah, it's really it's so cool. one. But basically, you just you you know you're gonna do a thicker peel. So not not this tool, but like a, a knife. And if you have a food hydrator, or you wanna you can put it in your oven on low heat, like at the lowest setting possible. You're gonna do this like probably all day um and you can dry the peels but then you just store them or if you have yeah, or if it's really sunny and dry outside just stick them outside and uh you have yourself an apple tea and so you know i love it i'm just trying to show people that if you can't find some of this stuff you can make it with your own two hands the stuff Absolutely. that you buy in the store just buy organic, so there's no chemicals on them. Obviously, wash them really well, and and there you go. Awesome! No, it's just so powerful, and the, I think the ones that I really love, um, also in my house, the ones that I regularly drink. One green tea, right? Green teas, so many different types of green tea. I know you. I just blow up just a couple. <laughs> I can't take it's too. It has green tea has too much caffeine for me personally but um but it but wow. people do love it i just 
I can't, my body can't handle the amount of caffeine in it for some reason. I wonder, I thought you can get ones with lower caffeine than the green teas, because that's what I've tried, I've done. What? Yeah, the lower, the lower caffeinated green teas. Oh, they have lower caffeinated, okay. Yeah, okay. so then it's like, so it has a little bit less, but it's packed with antioxidants called polyphenols. Again, super antioxidant, helps with anti-aging. You know, actually, are, they, you know, they really try to get rid of some of the free radicals that lead to the aging process. And so that green tea is another one to add in that you can easily do dandelion tea. Oh, yes. Very good for your, your kidneys, right? Yes. So good. It's delicious. I mean, I try to switch all my teas. Like I'll do turmeric one day, I'll do green, and then I'll do like a dandelion tea. And dandelion teens again are dandelions are everywhere. I and here in the United States, like they're they're looked at as like you know pests, and you know we just try to get rid of it. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I really think that at those dandelion teas are really where it's at because it's super important for yeah. detoxification overall. We're looking at it as a as a weed. As a weed, exactly. Like it's like, oh, get rid of this. But then again, the dandelion leaf can be used for arthritis and gout and headaches and uh, edema and so detoxifying. It's super detoxifying. Yeah. And actually, what I like to do is I cook with the dandelion. Yeah. Uh, dandelion yeah. right now in my fridge, and whenever I cook spinach and it, in my curry type, I'll add dandelions in it because oh, dandelions yeah, that's a good idea. Cause yeah, they're so right. Bitter. They're so bitter, and if you just make them alone, they're kind of hard to. Eat. They're hard to eat, but I'll do it with spinach and collards and then dandelion root. Yeah. Um, great for gut bacteria, so really important. And then you talked about the I love the sting the stinging nettle one that you talked about. The sting talk about stinging nettle relief. I didn't talk about it, but yeah, you're right. Oh, I thought you did. Okay, stinging nettle stinging nettle is another one. Yeah, it is a good that, one. Yes. A yeah. good one. I, guess. I wouldn't have that enough, but you know. That is a really good one. I, I I tend to shy away from the bitter teas, but I have to I have to have them more often. You're right. Nettles and dandelions. They're dandelions. Nettles and dandelion. Nettle is great for like liver detox because these are the ones mm -hmm. will really support your circulation, your immune system, your nervous system, your detoxification, your digestive system, respiratory, endocrine, high in magnesium. So it's really great for people with like menstrual cramps. And like reduces that leg cramping, and then obviously my favorite, I guess I, I'm really like my favorite is my turmeric. Like I can't get yeah, yeah. um, it. No matter what you where you're coming from in the world, there's there's a flavor profile of the teas. You know, like I'm big on the ginger and turmeric, but I like you know all this stuff. So like everybody. Just you know, you don't have to take exactly what we're saying, but no, but it's something it, different. What's tasty to you? I mean, every part of the world has a different type of tea, right? I mean, absolutely, it's so delicious. Yeah, and each one of them has their own phytonutrient chemical, so that's why it's always good to switch them out. Just don't just stick with one all the time. Keep on switching them out because that makes the biggest difference and really gives you each one has a, its own nutritional profile. And once you combine them together, oh, so yeah. delicious, so good. I would I would even venture to say, you know, try to find things that are local to where you are, kind of like almost like having honey, right? Like because it, it's it's if you like they say if you eat the honey that's local to you, it helps with the allergies from that area. I don't know if that's the same for herbs and flowers and stuff, but, but I would think that it would be because you know your body is going to react to your environment and where you are. So you know, try to have the things that are local to you. Absolutely. And I know there's a lot of other people that are speaking here about, oh, yeah, green tea. Uh, they love cinnamon tea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we want to know, you guys, what are your favorite oh. teas out there? Teas so, and said, is it possible to completely get rid of chronic inflammation? Well, that's why we're doing this. Well, that's why we're doing that, to try to get rid of as much as chronic inflammation as possible because it's chronic inflammation that's really leading to a lot of these chronic health conditions. Yeah. So these teas again, um, and then just with what you can do in your own kitchen, me and Yvonne are coming up with our next cookbook together called The Holistic Kitchen, uh, healing recipes from around the world that we are going to get on. And 
really try to show that you can start to incorporate just with the foods that you have in your kitchen, that in and of itself can lower overall chronic inflammation. Exactly. Um, just starting with everything that you have. Oh, I think Za says that they really like mint tea. Awesome. Yeah, fennel for is great for acid reflux. Yep. You know, Mar Marley says that she loves anise with her cinnamon stick. So many health benefits. Absolutely. Mint tea. Yeah, we didn't talk about mint tea. That's like an obvious one, but but I didn't, uh, didn't talk about it. Mint again, all of it. Oh, we hear a little kitty cat. Yeah, she just wants to say hello. See, say hello, Dr. McGee. Hey, how are you, gorgeous? <laughs> kitty is on a holistic diet too. Wow, that's her. her yeah, right. Hi. You can tell by her pretty nice fur coat. She's yeah, she's nice and shiny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And my allergies are gone after what you told me to do. I I can pick her up without sneezing. And That's I, amazing. Yeah, I thought I was I was really scared. I was gonna have to, you know. No, 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 no. We don't yeah, want to do that. No, no. and it worked. Awesome. Whatever you told me worked. So yeah. <laughs> here we are. There we are with the little baby, beautiful baby. So please let us know if you guys have any questions. Yeah. And, um, are there any announcements on your side, Yvonne, about what, what people can expect from My Halal Kitchen? No, not other than the fact that I'm back and I have lots of recipes and travel stories to share on MyHalalKitchen.com. So be bum you'll be ready to be bombarded with the beauty of turkey and turkish food i'm just uh still yeah, wait. how exciting i can't wait for that and then uh, yeah. your store. how's your yeah. store doing? sorry your store yes oh so you guys can find uh the moroccan saffron actually in our online store um myhalalmarkets.com and a bunch of other spices that i do have here spices we don't have too many teas right now, but we have lots of spices and the saffron you can use for for your tea. So myhalalmarkets.com. And other than that, just be on the lookout for more uh, video, working on more video and more travel stories and things like that. So inshallah, I'm excited about what's to come. That's really exciting. And I have a new children's book coming out that's coming yeah. out. Yeah, I'm so and excited. So it's coming out in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it's sort of out, but then because of all this stuff, it's getting, it hasn't, I haven't even gotten my hands on it yet. So that's why I haven't been really, oh, yet. so I wanted to do it first. I want to send out all my helpers, all my supporters copies first before I really did it, but keep a look at it. It's on Amazon. You guys can get it now. It really, oh, everything yeah, already. Okay. food and lifestyle and gratitude and all of that, like Adam is really discussing how uh, Adam is not, not feeling well. He has allergies and he had eczema. Yeah, you know <laughs> I know. He has allergies and eczema. And so he's like, why can't I run like the other kids? And then he talks to and he goes to his friends and his friends help him and educate him about what they do in their health, in their lives to optimize their immune system and gut health and all their friends help them with understanding all these different pieces on what, so things that your kids can do. So we really got to get the entire family involved. And we have so many great things me and Yvonne are going to have planned together. So this is really exciting. So keep, we're going to keep on doing this. We got books coming out. So please, please, please keep like and subscribe to our YouTube channels, to our Facebook, so then we can keep in touch with all of the great stuff that me and Yvonne, because me and her, we got a revolution to go. We're like, this is just a revolution. We're going to try to change the way that we focus on food because food is medicine, period. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really, you know, my passion really is in this, uh, this whole topic of, uh, I mean, I, I know Mediterranean food and Middle Eastern food the most. So I, I feel like, um, you know, I, I hope to be bringing people some some more good recipes and visual uh, appeal about um, the secret, you know, foods that are there. And the, they're not secret, but they're 
sort of buried under, you know, the, 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 the aunties, you know, recipes that they don't talk about anymore and things like that. Like everywhere in the world is being bombarded with, you know, new foods and packaged things. And, you know, I, I really want to unearth a lot of the stuff that I have found and discovered in Turkey and other parts of the region that Absolutely. are just so beneficial to people. And uh, I think everybody will enjoy those things. So please uh, keep us in your du'as and, and help. Yeah, it's easy for us to bring good stuff to all of you. Yes, because we're we are on we are women on a mission. Woohoo! Right. So, do you so have any we... questions, concerns, like comments? Please give us in the top on the comments below, and then spread the word. We're here every Wednesday, we'll and see you next week. Next week. All right. Bye. Take care. Assalamualaikum, everybody.